For Sarah's little 9 p.m. daily in Sarah's Kitchen. And there's free admission entertainment every weekend. Welcome, welcome to the DL Debate. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now, live on Highland Radio, or back via the podcast. Thanks, Donald Kavanagh, for the news. The legendary Ivan Borland for the power. Our plus, we have another pack show coming for you this evening. And Joe Dex is producing as ever. How are you, Joe? Uh, we are going to be talking soon, uh, later in the show, with Niall Cleary on a very brief performance by our hurdlers in the Division 2B semi-final in the park uh, at the weekend. Uh, nine players missing, uh, a few injuries, and the Satanta team had a, a team holiday, so a very brave performance from Mickey McCann's troops going down by a single point and indeed had a late opportunity to equalise the game from distance. So now Cleary, former County Star and Satanta player manager, he is coming into the studio later. After that, Maureen O'Donnell will be on to discuss Donegal ladies after they finished up the league with a 2-8-3-4 victory away to Tipperary. Be good to catch up with Mo as ever. Our under-20s are playing for Mana this Wednesday night, 7 o'clock in Bal Buffet. Get along and support them as they go for another victory. Uh, just from the weekend there, I was talking, there was a few of the Sister Sarah's crew out in uh, Boston uh, talking to a few uh, lads out there. Park McLaughlin, ex Bon Cranaman out there, listens to the show. I want to give you a shout out, Park. Leslie McGilligan in New York was given off because of the bank holiday. I took the bank holiday last week. Sorry about that, Leslie. I have to get an odd wee time off, uh, you know. But we'll be here for the next bank holiday because, of course, Donegal are playing Armagh in the league uh, final up in Crow Park. Looking forward to that and all the other games that's going, of course, Derry and Dublin as well. We'll be bringing you all the action at the weekend. Uh, earlier on today, I caught up with a former Derry County star uh, to hear his views on uh, the current situation in Derry. And of course, a man that has coached Donegal with a great chat earlier today. Here it is. Yes, now folks, I'm glad to say Paddy Bradley joins us, Derry legend and a man that has coached uh, club and county underage. And of course, came into your own county to get involved last year. And uh, always great to chat to him. Paddy, how are you? Not too bad, Brett, and yourself? But of course you're juggling, you have a few young bloods coming up as well there. Uh, I'd imagine life's all go. Aye, well, look, I'm still managing the club. I obviously um, won the last two intermediates. Uh, and there I am, with a, we had a bit of a fight there with the county board. Um, believe it or not, we're, we're still playing intermediate football for the third year in a row. We thought we had, um, had, had made our moves to get the thing changed. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, but look, it is what it is. Uh, we'll just have to try and go out and run it for a third time in a row. And and then I took on the job with under-16 manager in the club too. Aye, so it's busy. And as you say, I have four young boys of my own now and they're involved from under-16 right down to, to under-8. So aye, busy house and not much free time. But look, keeps you keeps you busy, keep, keeps the mind active and really, really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to the to the matches starting. I'd imagine there's a lot of Glen Olnays on them young Bradley boys because uh, if they're anything like the... The dad and the and the uncle in particular, I'll tell you what, they'll, they'll take a bit of stopping. But he, you just mentioned there, when I seen you as an intermediate even last year, I was kind of scratching my head, but you're saying it's a third year? What, what's what been the issue? Look, there's, they said about maybe a couple of years ago in Derry, Brenton, to do a bit of restructuring. I think it was always a 16-team league, senior league, uh, maybe 12 intermediate, maybe nine, something to that effect. To try to sort of balance that out, there's this idea to try and make our intermediate and junior representatives in Ulster that wee bit stronger try to get it to shut more like three twelves. but just with the nature of the way clubs are in Derry the 16 team league always suits uh, and the fact that your your county players aren't available anymore to play in league football there was always obviously even wherever I was back playing with Derry there was always that pressure on county players to go and play for their club because of relegation and the importance of the, the, the league's held back then so uh, they just, I suppose they wanted to change it. Um, I don't think it's worked. Um, the likes of Balderry, for example, and Corian are down down to play intermediate championship this year while they play in the senior league. Uh, and then the likes of Lavi um, are down. They're, t they're playing senior championship, but they're playing intermediate league. Yeah. I'm a great believer that you should always be playing in the same league and championship. I think you know there was a number of years ago Glenall were relegated to intermediate for one year. We um, decided to opt in to play the senior championship, but 
you know, we hadn't got the proper preparation. That was actually a, a mistake on our part. Um, so we have first-hand, I suppose, experience of knowing that if you're not playing the same league that you play in the championship, it's, it's not going to serve you any favour. So we felt having won the last two intermediate championships, even though they were trying to restructure and change, we'd done enough to prove, I suppose, mm -hmm. we were good enough to play in senior league and senior championship, and we thought they were going to change it. But, look, it was sort of vetoed by the county board at the, at the last minute. Um, there's actually another meeting tonight about it, but it looks as if we're going to be playing intermediate uh, league and championship this year, which is disappointing because we've took our took our medicine and the fact we relegated a number of years ago and we've had to go down and I suppose rethink about our, our structures, our coaching and you know what we're doing in the club. But we are bringing through lots of good young players. We won the under 17 A league last year for the first time in our history. Um, I've introduced a now we still have Alexa Bowen playing at 41 years of age and. Yun Nakian and John Nakian, you know, in their late thirties, but we haven't are just a lot of young players into the senior team. And I think even the team last year that won the championship was a lot better than the team that won it the previous year. And I'm really looking forward to this year. But look, we're just gonna have to try and win it for a third time, to be and uh, mm. prove that we're good enough to play at that level. Yeah, it's listen, very funny I met uh, Brendan McGuire there, the Lavi man. So you, you just mentioned there because I knew they were in the senior championship, but when they informed me about the league, I, I was gain, I was scratching my head on that one, Pally. Uh, uh, listen, I totally agree with you on the on the league and championships in terms of 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 clubs like that, and I suppose Barry in many ways it's maybe unfair in some of the teams in the intermediate with you being you know you should be at senior level at this point, and there you are back in that competition. I suppose it's it's tough on them as well. They they have such a, a side like you in there, especially the experience you've got the last few years. But listen, Barry, you only won what you're in. I suppose that's the main thing. But it's just looking there. It's it's just about six or seven days ago. It was a year ago that uh, Paddy Carr stepped down and uh, we had that game against Ross Common uh, and yourself and Aidan, you know, stepped up and, and took the team. But I suppose from looking outside now, assessing about that time, you know, there was so much drama happened in Donegal and I've said it countless times, even this morning, about the job that you and Aidan did do then to, to turn the corner. But what was it like at that time, uh, Paddy, in the in the middle of, of all that turmoil and, and was there... A thought in your mind that listen, this is too much for us to take on. Look, I've said lots of times to different people since that um, there's no such thing as a bad experience to me in managing or coaching. You know, you learn a lot from the different situations as you find yourself in. And um, I look, there was a lot of turmoil there. Probably, truth be told, Britain. Whenever I agreed to get down to Donegal, I probably didn't know the different issues that existed in, within the county. Had I have known maybe some of the stuff that was going on in the background, I probably would have had to think a bit harder and longer about whether or not I would have got involved. But as I say, there's no such thing as a bad experience. Um, I was lucky enough for that year to work with some really, really highly talented and motivated players. And look, we didn't achieve what we what we wanted to achieve. Um, I, look, again, it's been well documented the different reasons for that. and. There's a number of factors you could blame. Um, obviously, it was disappointing, sort of the way things panned out for Paddy. Paddy's a gentleman. Um, I had um, you know, a great time for the man, but the players sort of made a stance. That they wanted myself and Aidan to, I suppose, take over the mantle um, after Paddy left, and we were more than happy to do so because we felt we could turn a corner. And I felt we didn't a small bit. We were again a wee bit of pride in the jersey, but I felt ultimately last year one of the biggest factors uh, I suppose that contributed to maybe Donegal not achieving that, that what they could achieve was the, the injury list you know so so many key men out and obviously they're down a different division this year the, the, the level is obviously a bit less the standards maybe that wee bit lower but you could see and obviously Jim was going to come in and he was always he was always going to get the, bring get that lift from, from having been there before but you can see that the impact that you know having all them key men or most of them key men back is having they're you know, getting a good run of games. Um, the likes of Farah, for example, who I think is as good a forward as it is in the country. We had him last year and he played most of our games, but he was still only coming back from injury. He has benefited this year, I suppose, from having a full year's football and then a full pre-season. And I think he's only go from, going to go from strength to strength. I know Paddy got off the weekend there, but, you know, we obviously missed Paddy, who was the leader of the team last year for a significant amount of the game. And the likes of Michael Langan and Jason McGee and these boys didn't play much football last year, which... Obviously, ultimately, it was going to affect the team. But no, look, as I say, there's no such thing as a bad experience. Um, really, really enjoyed my time down there, even though there was a lot of stuff going on in the background. I'm um, just delighted to see the team going well again because there's plenty of good lads and there's a pile of talent there. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how them and Derry do in the, in the first round of the championship.
Mm. And Paddy, just at that period that, that you came in, I know there was a there was a training camp put together, the hopes were done to all get into the championship were very slim. But you did manage to turn it round. You know, you, you mentioned those players that weren't available and as well as that, you know, the likes of Ryan McHugh, the two O'Donnells, the different guys that get so many hurdles in there. But, and as you said, it's very interesting, you said there's no bad experience and fair play to you because it, it took some effort to turn that round. Really. But we came into the championship and you could see the change in the team in that short period of time in terms of, you know, you'd galvanised, you know, what was there and you'd made the best of it. And of course... You know, particularly, I think, you know, the highlight was the one against Monaghan in, in, uh, in Oma that night. You know, Monaghan very nearly made an All-Ireland final. You know, they, they were well equipped in the semi. So, you know, we the Derry game, we were well in it for, you know, 40-odd minutes before, you know, we conceded uh, a couple of goals and Derry pulled away. So, but it, it was it was a brilliant body of work for, for you and Aidan to have done. And, and pulling it together, really, did you get the sense from the group that, I suppose that we hit rock bottom after that Ross Common game, and did you just strip it back and start to build it from there? Aye, probably. Um, we look, we just hadn't performed as well as we'd like in the league. We obviously had the high of of beating Kerry in the first game, and there was a real good feel feel good factor within the county. But results just didn't go our way. And I say we we were missing key players. You mentioned obviously another couple of men, the, the Donalds, and you see Shane back playing this year. We sort of knew he was going to go travel, which was a blow even before we started. And obviously Michael had just retired. Ryan then had left for his own work commitments and whatnot. But I look, we get a good body of work done down in the curtain house. I know a lot of people within the county and beyond were critical of spending that amount of money, but look, that's just the nature of what teams do now. You know, they, they are all going in these training, training camps and whatnot. We did get a good body of work done probably it was a wee bit too late for the for the for the down game. Um, now I must say it was a really really disappointing going up to Newry that day and not getting a result because as bad as as it was, we, we were at still felt felt we were good enough to get over that hurdle, but we didn't. And look, we regroup. We done plenty of good work between the Ulster Championship and the and the All Ireland series. And look to get down to Clare, who were you know were, were going rightly uh, and get a result down there. Really give the team a lift. Uh, and then obviously with a really, really good result against Monaghan and, and Oma. And we went into that Derry game really believing that, that we could win that game. Uh, and for maybe, as you say, 45, 50 minutes, um, we played really, really well. Um, gave them plenty of baller. Missed a few easy scoring chances in the first half. And that game could have been a lot cl closer going down the stretch. So I think the players took confidence from that. Um, and again, all credit to the players. An experienced bunch of players. They knew they hadn't performed um to the level that they were expected to perform, but they're proud men. And like anybody goes out to wear their county jersey, regardless what county you're from, you, know, you want to do the best for, you know, you're representing your club and uh, and the people of your county. And, um, you know, that was them that turned the corner, really. Um, yeah. You know, the uh, leaders within that group. Um, and look, really, really disappointing that night against Tyrone, because again, Tyrone coming to Bally Buffet, you think, you know, um, you can turn them over, but we just didn't didn't perform, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the reality. Um, probably myself and Aidan having chatted about it after the event, maybe got a few things wrong in terms of our matchups, but you live and learn, you know, and yeah. disappointing. But look, fair play to the lads, they've regrouped again. Obviously, Jim's comes in, come in. There's a that sense of expectation and that buzz and around the county again. Uh, and look, they've been down Division Two, as I say, where the quality is maybe that wee bit lower. They've got a good run of games into men. He's using his panel well. Um, and if they, you know, avoid, I know they picked up a few injuries, Ryan and Paddy at the weekend, as I said, and uh, if they can get everybody a clean bill of health, they'll go to Celtic Park um, and they'll not fear Derry. That's one thing for you. Yeah. Paddy, very interesting. Of course, great points as ever. Paddy, just last point on last year, if they asked you, the change from the, the down game and the Clare, the second half against Clare, I think in particular, was there, a, was there a moment or was it the training you're doing was taking a while to click in or the belief you're putting in? What would you put down... Uh, to that performance up in Park Esler versus the other championship games? I know, I just think it's the body of work you do it to, you know. Um, I look, you know, that's one thing I will say. Anytime we went to convoy to train, you know, the boys didn't come with, with their heads on the floor. The boys came and, and worked hard really every night and I listened to, to what myself and Aidan were, were, were trying to implement. And I look, as I say, proud, proud, proud men. 
uh, want to do the best for their county, wanted to turn the corner and get a wee bit of lockdown in Clare because I think maybe early doors they missed the goal chance or two. We could have had a goal or two, and maybe we, you know, that was the luck we maybe didn't have earlier on the season. You know, you read your luck and you, you know, but be working hard and, and and doing that, you do get the breaks. And I think we got maybe a few breaks down in Clare, and from then I say the confidence started to grow, and obviously as I say produced a really really good performance that night against Monaghan. And looking, there's fine margins. Like Monaghan went to the whole way to all Ireland semi final, and you know, we ten minutes to go right in the game with Dublin. So, and that was a team that that, that Donegal had beat only a few short weeks earlier. So, that's the fine margins that there are in sport. And as I say, um, you know, prefer playing them for regrouping and, and, and turning that bit of a corner, and putting a wee bit of pride back into the jersey after what was a, a, a traumatic season. Yes, indeed, indeed, Paddy. It was a dramatic season, surely. Hey, and listen, funny how it all can change. Hey, but I say you, you, the work that you and Eden put in was integral to that uh, turn, uh, uh, Paddy. Surely, fair play to you, Paddy. Obviously, Donegal and Derry. There's like, the whole spotlight of the championship at the start as everybody's looking to this game in Celtic Park. We're always interested in what happens in Derry, regardless. You know the sto- the detail and the story they've been on from from Division Four to the best team in Ulster currently and knocking on the door of an All-Ireland has been unbelievable, uh, Paddy. And it's amazing how that story has gone from rock bottom to, to the top. Um, just from the weekend there, Paddy, we had quite a few games that were a bit dull in that and, you know, not really just went with the, with the script in terms of uh, your game with Ross Common. Was there anything to be read in it? Did the game Derry posting a, a healthy 2 uh, look, I wasn't at the game. Uh, I must admit, um, the fact it was a, I, I was, I was at quite a few of the Derry games throughout the night, league this year. Um, I didn't go to this game because I, I always felt Derry were going to win, and I knew they were probably going to experiment. In fairness to, to Mickey and Gavin, they have used the league as an opportunity to, to try and introduce a few new players, and that's I suppose going to be the one, well, one one of the positives that Derry will take from this league. Um, they now seem to be building a bit of a panel. Um, the likes of Lachlan Murray, obviously, um, shot the lights out yesterday. He's a player that I know really well, having coached him with under 20s. He said, bad luck with with injuries. He never seems to be fit to get a run of games, um, but he's got the last two or three games, and I think he rewarded the management team yesterday with his performance. You know, it's been well documented that Shane McGuigan obviously carries the bulk of the scoring threat, but a bit every day, that Shane's maybe closed down. I, I, I say not having watched the game. I know yesterday, for example, he might have had a bit of an off day. I was reading, he was marking the likes of Brian Stack, who I know is a very, very competent defender, and it's good to see the likes of Lachlan stepping up. Cormac Murphy, obviously, was another one. I think we're talking about forwards. Cormac Murphy was another one who, again, his progress has been hampered a bit with injuries, but he has shown glimpses uh, that he can make it at this level. Uh, the one thing that I think Derry have in abundance, Britain, and you'll, you'll know this, is the players all over the the field who really go at you, who really take men on, and the two men I mentioned, you know, you know, you add them to the likes of your Ethan Doherty's, to your Connor Doherty coming from half back, Brenton Rogers, Connor Glass from midfield, Derry have serious running power, uh, both in around the middle eight, and then the men that can take uh, men on inside. So, um, I look, it's very very encouraging league campaign for Derry. It'll be interesting to see next week. Um, how that game goes. Uh, probably knew that night they played Dublin that and, and the league a few weeks ago that they were going to be playing them again in the league final. My sense is that they're going to go down and treat the game as a marker as to where they are. Dublin obviously have started the league really, really slowly, but have really shot the lights out in the last number of weeks. They are the farm team in the country, along with Derry. Uh, and that you know looks as if it's going to be a cracker game next week, in which I'm sure is going to be a, a nearly a packed Crook Park because I'd imagine our man Donegal will bring decent support with him too. Yeah, set up for a cracker. Um, interesting points there, Paddy. And, and, and you're right, the likes of Murray hitting one four there, and he's in the already four points. Um, interesting stuff because I, I just listen. I think McGuigan no more than you were inside there, Paddy, on his day. He's he's unmarkable. You know, McKinless is back from from injury. The Derry squad's looking very healthy. McFall. Paddy, still, he's kind of doing the job in there. I, I think there's a lot more to come from him. Or what's your feeling on McFall? 100%. Um, now, by all accounts, he came on really yesterday and controlled the game in the second half. And he has that potential from either 6 or 11 to pull strings and control the game. He obviously, somebody there's a, a bit of a scoring threat too. Like, a great man to kick kick a point or two from in around that 35, 40 yards. So that'll be the one thing, as I say, that pleased Derry yesterday was, was the spread of scores whenever Shane was shut down. I felt last year, um, Brenton McCall, who I rate really, really highly, done a very, very good job in Shane and Valley Buffet. 
and I'm sure he's been earmarked again by, by Jim and his team to mark Shane. So if that's the case, um, you know, Derry are going to need other threats. And as I say, the positive thing for Derry throughout this league campaign has been their scoring average and the fact that others are, are contributing. But it's not just attacking ways like you know, the likes of Chrissy obviously is now getting on 33, 4 years of legs and Der- age. The likes of David Baker has come in there at corner back, who I didn't know a lot about. Uh, and you see his name being named in the McKenna Cup and you're thinking this lad's getting a chance. Not really expecting him to, to nail down a starting spot, but he has proved undroppable at the minute. Um, you know, really, really good player. Um, so I, I, it's positive and the fact that Derry do seem to be building the panel and bringing men on and the forward line and defence that seem to be fairly cover positions and do jobs. Yeah. And Division 2 for us, Paddy, I suppose it's been strange. I thought Division 2 was getting a bit more competitive when we went down, you know, but having seen it, you know, there's a big drop-off and you see probably Ross Common there, that's their fourth time uh, going up and going back down again the last 10 years or whatever. The top teams, probably tend to be in the round it, and you see there Donegal and Armagh going down, going back up with very little fuss, to be honest. I think Donegal makes the good with the bad, probably in this uh, league campaign, but when they've opened up against teams, they have put teams away. They probably should have beat Armagh up there, and I think without even playing that well. But then you've seen Armagh shoot the lights out in a couple of games since. So it's it's, it's set for a good one, uh, Paddy. You read Donegal about six or seven injuries. I just wonder, Paddy, you know, if those if all those lads don't play against Armagh, it's hard to see them being ready to take the, the the field against Derry and Celtic Park. And if they don't, you know, it's a it's a huge waiver team out there. Look like they, they could have a full uh, clean bill of health going into the game. Aye, look, I, 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 I listened to a clip Jim had with was it Ashley and Riley and off the ball yesterday. He was interviewed after the match and he talked about the nature of the way the season set up and I a hundred percent agree with him is that manager and tender hooks because there is no space between the league and championship to get injuries cleared up. You know, in one sense we talked about Donegal and how positive it is to see the likes of Farah getting getting a full, you know, league campaign under his belt. Pater Mogan's come back in there, Shane O'Donnell's back. But then you have the flip side of that is that Paddy and Ryan are injured the weekend. How serious is that? Are they going to be available for the very game? Um Jason McGee has played little or no football at all again. What's the story with him? Is he going to be available? Because to me, he's a key player. He's close. Uh, yeah. He's what? Sorry, he is pretty close, Paddy. Yeah, Jason. Pretty, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty close. Aye. So, aye, look, look, injuries are going to play play a part. Um, you say a bit, you know, if they don't play against Armagh, will they be available for Derry? Well, the flip side of that again, Breton, is maybe you don't risk them against Armagh to make sure they are available, you know. So yeah. only Jim and his management team will know you know, the lay of the land with injuries. Um, you would suspect, but, you know, Donegal need all them boys available to go into Celtic Park where they have a really, really good, really good record in the last number of years uh, to try to try and turn them over. Derry have been very, very lucky, it must be said, in the last three or four years with injuries. Like, none of their key men rarely uh, are out. Like, you could back in the last three, four years, Conor Glass, you know, has barely missed a game, barring you know, been rested. Shane McGuigan never injured, Bretton Rogers never injured. Um, they've had an injury out over Connor Doherty. Again, there was question marks about how serious his knee injury was, but he took the field yesterday. Um, the likes of Potty McGrogan was rested yesterday. So the, the the thing about Derry is they've been fit to rest because they're they are playing so well and because they got off to such a good start in the league, it has allowed Mickey and Gavin the opportunity to rest these boys. Um, I think there's a, a doubt around Gareth McKinless. Um, the chat is he could have a broken nose. I suppose it's one of them things he probably could play with a, a bit of a mask on, but he would be a key player for Derry as well. So injuries are going to play play a part over the next few weeks. And whilst Derry and Armagh will want to go to Crook Park and maybe use their or Derry and Donegal will want to go to Crook Park and use their their two games as good markers to see where really they are. At the same time, in the back of the head, you've got to think they've got to be thinking towards the championship and getting injuries cleared up too. Yeah, and Paddy, just on that, obviously, you know, you're looking at Derry back to back Ulster. It's all about in All Ireland. You know, tell fair enough if you picked up in All Ulster, that would be good. In many ways, you know, would would the route of let's say you happen to lose to Donegal, would that would you think, as from your manager perspective, you could become the group stage a lot fresher? Would that help your tilt in All Ireland ultimately? Well, look, I think ultimately Mickey Hart is the sort of is the sort of man we know always sets out to win a ring he, 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 he's entered into. 
I think they'll obviously want, um, want to keep momentum. They want to beat Donegal. They'll not want to lose at home. They want to hang on to their Ulster title. But, yeah, you're right. If if they were to lose either to Donegal or an Ulster semi-final, would it really be a bad thing? Probably not. Okay, they could take a few weeks, regroup, uh, and make a serious tilt when it comes to the All-Ireland group stages. Um, like that is where Derry are at in terms of, you know, that's, you know, that's the ambition. Um, the yeah. players all throughout the league campaign and in the interviews I've listened to, you know, they've talked about the fact they want to be all Ireland contenders, they want to play on the latter stages of the championship. They've been beaten now in two All Ireland semi finals. The next step for them is trying to get to an All Ireland final and trying to one Sam. But look, I think personally, you know, Dublin are a fair bit out in front and it would take Dublin to have a really bad day for anybody to turn them over at the minute. But look, that's for further down the line, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was just laughing, Paddy, the way when Dublin weren't going well, Desi Farrell was getting all the grief. And when they are going well, now there's not a word about Desi Farrell. It's about the players, you know, so <laughs> there's different teams. Paddy, just last question you, and listen, thanks again so much for taking the time there to talk to us. Paddy, last question just on Hart and Devlin. The wall of Farrar, when they come on, um, has Hart got the, the Derry passport now? Has he, has he been accepted <laughs> across the county? Because, you know, it was such a, I suppose, an unusual. Um, uh, coming into the job and you know you had a few goes at him from different people namely of course the, the, the shot from Brawley and that which I thought was was out of order but what, what's the feeling now is it basically he's doing a job and doing a good job and get on with it look there's mixed opinions there, there's always going to be from a personal point of view I, I still find it strange to see him along a line uh, with a dairy fractured and a dairy hat on him yeah. um, like I, I was one of the players that played in that year where, where he managed against us Um we were brought up to to hate Tyrone. You know that was just that was just that was just the way of it. So it's strange to see, you know, Mickey Hart, who's such a a, a Tyrone figurehead, stand on a, on a dairy dugout. Yeah. Um, but look, the players, just the the nature of the way players are and how professional they be about things. They're just focused on on, on playing football, one on one in matches, and twenty one cups and trophies. Um, so the, 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 as long as the team's doing well, you're not going to hear too many people criticising. Um, Look, again, it'll be judged not on the league campaign, it'll be judged on, on how Derry do in the championship. If Derry don't happen to, you know, reach the targets that they've set for themselves in terms of retaining an Ulster title or getting at least to an All Ireland semi final, which they did in the last couple of years, you can imagine the nice will be out for them, you know. Yeah. Um, that's just the nature, the nature of football. It's a, a sport, it's a, it's a results business. It, it was obviously a big risk by the Derry County Board to appoint them. And and in a few months' time, we'll find out whether or not they've got that right or not. Yeah, yes, indeed, Paddy. We really look forward to it. There's a fascinating Ulster Championship coming in down the track, Celtic Park. Hey, myself and yourself will be uh, sitting maybe not too far away for that one, Paddy. It'll be good to catch up with you, and uh, we hope may the best team win, as the man says. No, no bother, Britain. I'm really looking forward to it. To say, you know, the league. Leagues are for planning, as well. I that was the way I was brought up. And obviously, championships, what it's all about. So, you know, the, the real games begin now in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, hundred percent. Barry, listen, first class. I'll catch up with you, man. And uh, thanks again for joining us this evening. Yes, that's our Paddy. Hey, hating the poor Tyrone, man. We don't hate Tyrone, they're nice. Hey, but Niall Cleary's in studio here now. You don't hate Tyrone, do you? No, I don't hate Tyrone. <laughs> Sorry, Niall. I, I need to give you a bit of mic to answer that. You're, of course you don't hate Tyrone, no? No, 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 definitely don't. <laughs> no reason to have it. We, we have no reason. They know. We're, we, we can sort of Tyrone, man. Uh, I, I know. Niall's going to give us a lowdown on the county hurling scene at the minute after this break. Ladder Kenny, serving food you'll love till 9 pm daily in Sarah's Kitchen. And there's free admission entertainment every weekend. It's time to visit Ireland's newest Lexus dealership, Lexus Ladder Kenny. With 50 years of experience, you can trust us in this new era of electrification. Experience our all electrified range, including the stunning ES Hybrid Saloon and our award winning range of plug in hybrid SUVs and view our finance offers, including the all-new LBX. Start your 241 journey with Lexus Letterkenny Port Road. Lexus. Experience amazing. Attention job seekers. Atlantic Technological University is looking for dynamic individuals to join our team of administrative professionals across our campuses in the west and northwest of Ireland. We are looking for individuals to form a panel of grade 3 and grade 4 administrative staff to fill posts across the university. Enjoy competitive pay, a supportive work environment and the opportunity to grow your career with us. Find out more at atu.ie forward slash jobs. 
The DL Debate with Sister Sarah's Letterkenny, serving food you'll love till 9pm daily in Sarah's Kitchen. And there's free admission entertainment every weekend. Yes, folks, welcome back again. Let's say Niall Cleary has joined us in studio to talk small ball. Uh, Niall, considering the backstory of this league semi final, you know, Satanta Hall, the likes of McDermott, Danny Cullen, these guys uh, out injured, you know, how proud are you uh, with the performance that Donegal gave uh, against Tyrone Saturday at the park? Yeah, very proud, Brendan. I think they'll be delighted, you know, to to be down so many and not just so many in numbers, but so many experienced players would have kind of carried the can for Donegal for years there for the younger lads to come in and step up and kind of make it their team as such for much of the league it was a really big plus for Mickey and you know bodes well for championships that there'll be savage competition for places now but yeah they were, they'll probably be coming away from it disappointed not getting to the league final um, you know had their chances near the end and they could, could have been there but overall they'll be delighted with how the league went I think yeah look away at that late opportunity it, that would have sent it extra time yeah, that would have sent it to extra time, I think. Um, yeah, he was like it was a hard one. It was over near the sideline, yeah, and it was difficult. 75, 80 meters. And then you're kind of, you know, you have the wind and everything to account for as well. He's a great striker of a ball, and he could have done it, but it was disappointing. But I think there was chances before that that they could have maybe taken as well. They did more wide in the second half there, and they could have kept the momentum going there at a point. They might have got over the line in the end, but. Yeah, three fourteen to five nine. When you look at the score, mm. if we had a score to five nine, you thought maybe we could luck with a few goals. And we hung in there, but you know we were doing the 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 higher amount of yeah, se- se- seventeen scores to fourteen. Yeah. I think kind of tells a little bit of a story. I think Donegal probably did shade it overall on the hurling. Like even the Donegal goals, I think were kind of worked well. Tyrone were probably naive tactically. The middle was very open there. The Tyrone goals, I think Donegal will be really, I know Mickey definitely will be really disappointed with those. You know, the first one turned over in the middle of the field, a couple of defensive errors kind of for a couple there, and then Luke with an uncharacteristic mistake as well. You know, when you're giving away five goals, I know there'll be a lot of video work done on that during the week. Because mm. you got obviously with the drop in, in, in Oma a few weeks back, but then, uh, you know, the, the London, the two performances of London against Tyrone and London against us looked like certainly we were going to be the better side as the season went on you know particularly at home like you would think if we had our full side side there at the weekend we had to definitely listen I know not definitely but mm. we certainly if you look at it trying to read those last couple of matches we look like we're maybe in a better place than Tyrone yeah I think so and, and it's strange because Tyrone will be up in the in the Christie ring this year and Donegal will be in the Nicky record but personally I would feel probably Donegal are definitely on a par maybe maybe a step ahead overall I think the league has been good at Donegal bringing on new players and yeah definitely I thought they performed like that's a big thing about Mickey's kind of reign I suppose is that they've consistency throughout their performances even when they're down players somebody else comes in does the job and they're competitive in nearly every game like you know even the Derry game there where I could have got away from them down inexperienced players hung in there on Saturday they're down a pile of players you know you could easily say ah oh, feck it sure look we're down this many we'll, we'll, we'll throw in the towel but kept at it and kept at it so definitely I think it's, a, it's in a really good place at the moment and good young players coming through Kieran Curran there from Burt got a full league under his belt Peter Kelly from St. Unions you know 2-2 at the weekend he's only he's just out of minor I think I actually taught Peter when he was in fifth class that's how young he is yes. so you know if he's doing that when he's 17-18 it's, uh, it'll be really interesting to see how his career progresses. Yeah, and listen, it was a harsh day. Like, we were down at the yeah. park. Uh, now, you just mentioned to me about the cold hand that can affect the, the, the ball handling. Uh, mm. uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a funny old game, wasn't it? Like, there was a lot of kind of, I felt anyway, there was a lot of mistakes and handling errors, hand passes, balls being dropped. And, you know, it probably was very cold down on the pitch and I was just listening to Radio 1 on the way home, the Limerick match that evening. And they were kind of saying similar. So it could be put down to that, you know, that the weather, it can, it can be very cold on the hands. Um, I don't know if there's any way to counteract that or what, yeah. the, what the boys do at half time but yeah. yeah, it definitely could have affected the, the quality of the game I think yeah yeah. by the time we left the park I'll tell you what there was the shivers was on me tell I me Dale, the, the, the way the league now has changed three teams are going up mm. is, and is that is every league doing the same is every side of the league doing that there's a similar yeah there's similar so it goes there's one there's still going to be a 1A and a 1B Um and that's made up of the teams who are already in 1A and 1B, I think. But it's more streamlined or something. And then you have you have Division 2 on its own. So you'll have Donegal, Tyrone and Derry are going up. Yeah. And then you'll have, as far as I know anyway, you'll have Meath, Kildare, Down and Kerry. Yes. So like you can't underestimate the, 
the benefit of playing teams that are better than you, team that fast, being exposed to that faster hurling, that you know more skillful, stronger teams. Everything has to improve, and that's probably what Donegal want. And you want to see that progression because you don't want to be a team bouncing up the division, back down the next year, up winning Nicky record, back down. You want to be seeing that progression, and to have a chance now to do it. And and yeah, it'll be an exciting year next year. Tough, challenging, but exciting at the same time and from your time playing now the, the evolution of that from a time when 2B was maybe mm. a wee bit of a step too far how has Donegal proje- proje- progressed so much compared with teams mm. around them you know everybody wants to progress but yeah. it looks like our progression is moving at a quicker pace in a lot of sides around us yeah when I when I came up first it was 3A anyway we were in we won that I think in 2017 so like anything Brendan there's probably a, a pile of things coming together at the right time there was a good core group of lads there Lee Henderson Kieran Matheson Joe Boyle Sean McFay Danny Cullen Kevin Campbell they were all there then you had an influx of a few boys from outside you know Declan Coulter joined from Armagh um, you had Luke White coming in from Wexford Davin Flynn from Tipperary Michael Donoghue from Galway I think that probably drove up the standards as another element and then Mickey coming in was probably a big thing the improvement in the setup, just more professional higher expectations holding you to a higher standard like when I came in first I'd say maybe 50% of the panel would have committed to the S&C or the gym or stuff like that. You know, the county yeah. board was scratching their heads giving boys memberships in the Aura and Aura <laughs> telling them at the end of the year it was used 10 times, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas now 90, 95% of the players yeah. are bought into it like, and it has to be that way. Yeah. So that's probably why, like a combination of those things and then the work in the clubs, like you can see eight senior clubs, every club represented. Mm. Definitely a lot of work going on. And yeah. Listen, like anything though, you could see the the, the, obviously the skill level in Hurland number one but unless you have the power now you know we've seen yeah. that we've seen that right ac- across the board you know I see it there even my St. Unions now you know the, the detail and the amount of backup to, to all the mm. procedure even say from, from my time even the last time I yeah. was involved coaching so the county thing now is going up and up and as you said there's probably is a bit of a thing you know the, the experienced players then pushing down on the lads this is the way it has to be and then either you're in or you're not. I suppose if, if it's that level when if, if it's kind of left up to you, certain lads don't really have it in them to go and push it. Whereas once the group has that collective there, you can really start to go after things. If Mickey's yeah. going to progress, as you said, it's all right having skill and half decent players or good players. Everybody has to be at, at least the fitness level of, of the teams around you. Yeah, definitely. Like That's a big thing because you know if you see when they go up next year, I'd say these boys whenever the Nicky Rackle finishes they won't get much of an off season because they'll have to be yeah. you know pushed it on another level to get to the level of I've seen you know leashing down you can see there's still a slight difference maybe if you go up to, to down and Kildare in conditioning so and that'll be another step that on the ladder that they'll have to achieve but it's kind of normal now for young lads coming in like Conor Gartland or Liam McKinney or Stephen McBride them young lads they're looking up to the other lads and they're all doing it so it's become normalised now and then I think it's probably happened underage now as well where you know you've you've good management teams with the under 17s the under 20s the under 15s and they're getting exposed to that kind of high performance thing which is great to see as well that the hurlers are getting it as well and they're and they're committed to it themselves as well so yeah definitely very important like the skills in hurling is always going to be number one but you still have to be able to keep up with your opponent and you have to be able to, to compete physically as well. The world will have to be open 24 hours a day. Now, <laughs> please, are, are you saying, Neil, it's, it's a big thing from the better teams, the conditioning? Is it, it isn't that it just teams maybe technically you know, good players, skillful mm. players, obviously, if they're a league up, but would you notice the condition as in the players are are physically more developed, is that, or, or faster, stronger, a bit of both? Or? Yeah, I think you can see it, like when Donegal go to play down, say a full down team, or if we went to play Kildare over the years, yeah. sometimes, like you, you might, we would probably pride ourselves on having good hurlers, and that would be our strength, but you kind of come away thinking, Jesus, they're in serious shape, you know, they've been, they've had six, seven years of the gym, like behind them, and you definitely can see, see slight differences, but I think Donegal, has come on a long way and I think at the weekend I actually thought I thought in the first half Donegal looked looked really fit like against that wind looked really well conditioned were able to carry the ball you know against the wind and, and get themselves on the front foot so I think they are and I know they have a really good S&C coach in there Shane um, for the last few years mm. which helps having the same fella a bit of continuity and stuff yeah there. this and this is very important how much do you think then uh, missing another game against Derry which is kind of a good barometer of going on that league is it something that you 
that that we needed, or is it not that big of a deal? Maybe pick up a couple of injuries going into the Nicky record. Um, I think ideally, yeah, they would they would have liked to have another game because it's another game, especially for those younger lads, less experienced lads, and set, maybe a couple of lads coming back from injury. But also, I, I'm not sure when the first round of Nicky record is, but I think it's pretty soon. So I don't think they'll be too disappointed either. You know, the, the promotion is such a big thing up to division so overall they'll be delighted with that yeah April 13th Armagh what, what would you make in me I mean is it a qu- qu- question of us maybe playing Derry that Armagh is going to be trying to get up to your level well that's it like uh, traditionally Armagh would have I suppose always been better than Donegal up to the last five or six years so they'll definitely still there'll still be an element of that in their mindset that they won't want to lose to a Donegal team and it'll be you're, you're a, it's easy to be the underdog going into games isn't it you know yourself there's no pressure on you whereas when you're the favourite, you're carrying the favourites tag now, carries a little bit of different pressure. So, But I, I would see, yeah, I think Donegal probably will be looking at that and, and hoping to get off the Nicky record with a win. Yeah, perfect. And tell me, were you, uh, were you on this holiday, were you? No, I wasn't on the holiday. <laughs> no, I'm the, I'm the sensible one. You have to kind of keep your distance a little bit. But no, I was, uh, I'm told it was a, was a good warm weather training camp <laughs> over there. I don't know what they were training <laughs> the, for. The, but the, the training camp's in inverted brackets, I think, there. Uh, yeah. this, and, uh, but listen, what a season for the club and well deserved. And yeah, yeah, look, it's well, well and truly over and done with now. Parked, yeah. it's, in the, it's in the rear view mirror and we were, at, we were back at it last that's week. That's fighting so. talk now, yes, fighting talk. Oh, Watch out, it, everybody. <laughs> we'll continue this conversation when the club kicks in and now uh, for now hey, thanks so much for wrapping up the hurdle 100% for the thanks Brian appreciate it we'll be back with Maureen O'Donnell after this break The DL Debate with Sister Sarah's Ladder Kenny serving food you'll love till 9pm daily in Sarah's Kitchen and there's free admission entertainment every weekend <laughs> Don't miss the BAFTA award-winning comedian Michael McIntyre's brand new show, Magnificent, at the SSC Arena Belfast on Friday the 31st of May 2024. As always, Highland Radio make it easy for you as we look after all your needs. We will provide luxury transfers, overnight stay at the Clayton Hotel Belfast on a and b basis, your ticket to the show, shopping time in Belfast City Centre. For more information, go to the outlet at highlandradio.com or give us a call on 074 91 25000. Michael McIntyre in Belfast. This Easter, the children of Palestine should be colouring eggs, looking forward to a feast of traditional dishes and spending time with extended family. Instead, they are afraid, separated from their families and they are starving. People in Ireland say they want to do something to help, but don't know how. This Easter, join Boher in providing the gift of humanitarian aid to people in Palestine. Please, give within your means. It can mean so much at boher.ie. Families in Palestine need our help today. Please, give so they can grow at boher.ie. It's time to transform your smile with the help of Blue Poppy Dental Letterkenny and Donegal Town. Their expert team offer orthodontics, teeth whitening, implants and composite bonding all in-house. Start your journey by calling 074 97 40404 or easily book your appointment online at a time that suits you through their user-friendly patient portal. Available anytime, anywhere at bluepoppydental.com. Blue Poppy Dental and Orthodontics, Letterkenny and Donegal Town. Gift vouchers available. The DL Debate with Sister Sarah's Ladder Kenny, serving food you'll love till 9 pm daily in Sarah's Kitchen. And there's free admission entertainment every weekend. Yes, folks, welcome back. I'm delighted to see I'm now joined by former County Star and Highland Radio top pundit, the woman knows it all. <laughs> That's more than that. <laughs> I Where can see you, Mo. You can't see me. I can see you shaking your head and laughing. Listen, you do. We, listen, we trust you a lot, Mo. Don't don't worry about that, Mo. Tell me, Think so. can you give us an overview of the league? For this and finished on a good note, away to uh, Tipperary, uh, a good rec- victory for our women's team. What did you make of, of the league and, and John McNulty's uh, uh, first uh, shot at it? Uh, listen, uh, you know, it's like you said, it was a nice way to end, wasn't it? Um, with a uh, especially with such a long journey down to Tipperary, you know, gives them a bit of hope going forward. And there's there's a it's a long wait now to the next game. But wrapping up the league, look, um, I think it is where it is. And uh, you know, if I was looking at the team from last year going in now this year, and I, I would have thought I would expect that maybe, you know, that 
with with you lo- losing so many experienced players and and trying to regroup and transition, you know that it was going to be difficult. And I mean, maybe the the shot of getting into Division One was maybe above expectations. And to be honest, I think they are where they are, and it's a good place to be. And Division Two, I mean, they performed all right considering throughout. Um, what was it? I mean, they um lost. And, and John McNulty said this himself, they lost to Kildare and they lost to Tyrone. And both those teams now are in the Division Two final, Brendan, uh, 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 in April now. So uh, I think it's in a couple of weeks' time. And like when you lost out to them two top teams, look, they lost two, drew one. Um, I felt those were three games that, that Donegal definitely could have won, maybe had their bit more firepower up front. Uh, but you know, look, wrapping up the league and they they finished third overall, and 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 that one against Tipperary yesterday, where you know Donegal weren't weren't ahead maybe until maybe six minutes left to the end of the game, like so it was a real battle and real the real grit of the Donegal to say that you you, you know you're used to seeing and and it was great to come away just with a one point victory. Look, but it could have been different. Um, I've said it all year. Claire Frail has been phenomenal in that. Um, she saved them a one v one at the last couple of minutes, and what could have been, what was a one a one point victory could have easily been a two two point defeat as well. But it's really really good. And look, I think it's a good place to be, Brendan. They're in Division Two. It is hard to get out of, but I don't think they're ready just yet to go up to Division One. So, you know, another year or two in Division Two, it'll really really tell. Like if you look at Armagh, they've gone up to Division One. They top Division One football now. They're in the league final against uh, Kerry in a couple of weeks as well, and they have been in Division Two for a long time, Brendan. So it's not going to do Donegal any harm. It's it's, it's been. It's been a good campaign, I think, throughout for them. Yeah, that's the most always interesting because you always want to go up, but then as you're saying there, uh, you know, if you end up a wee bit too early, it could hamper you in terms of if you took a couple of beatings, it could knock you back, particularly if you're d- developing a new team. Yeah, like if I look, if I had to say that Armagh would have went up a couple of years ago, I don't think they were ready to go up. They have really been battling really hard in Division 2 and like just last year won the Division 2 final up to Division 2 won as I say this year but they've been really putting in the work building a, a solid a solid side and you know yeah, of course everyone will say Amy Macken carries the side there but Carolina Hanlon's in there as well she's a really experienced player and you know McConville and they're players that have been there for years experience behind them uh, they've worked this new group of young players into, into the mix and, and now they're competing against the Dublins and the Kerrys and the Galways up there in Division 1 and that's come from playing really tough football in Division 2 Brendan so like in terms of are you ready everybody wants to go to Division 1 but is Donegal ready for Division 1 just yet you know I've often said it to Neve McLaughlin in interviews and about, I said it to John McNulty would you be ready to go maybe you know up to Division 1 and listen it's lovely to get a day out in Crow Park in Division 2 final at the end of the year you know but with two teams going up this year there's you know so any, the two teams in the final would go up and it's like I say I just think maybe another couple of years or a year or two in Division 2 is definitely going to do this Donegal team a lot so you know listen finishing third and they're nowhere near relegation to Division 3 so that's very very promising finishing third onto the two leaders I think that's good too you know yeah. I'll be happy with that Stable. I think that's that uh, seems smart enough in terms of how this has to play out. No, well, tell me the development of these players. You know, our miners had a great victory last week. There, three fifteen to two six against Tyrone. You know, we've talked about underage. It's Declan McDermott's side. You know, that's a br- brilliant victory. High scoring as well. Is the development coming from underage? Is it coming from our clubs, or is it coming from them getting into the county squad and then being developed on? Where where is where does it, or is it a mixture of it all? Yeah, I think I think it's what you said there, Latter. I think it's a mix of everything, to be honest. I think a lot of work has to go on a club level, to be quite honest with you. And the clubs have really built up over the years, like, you know, and we, we go back to this at swings and roundabouts and Terman at the top and St. Eunice weren't at the top for long uh, in the club scene and, and Glen Finn and Maval have been been the, the, the teams to watch, you know, but you've done low underage coming into the mix now. And I mean that comes from like the experience of Tony Boyle in there and he's working with the young people and people that you you know they you know, the command respect at club level as well and uh you know it's it's all voluntary work uh, and it's long and it nights out and it's commitment and it's coming from that at club level and I think then it's particularly important then when you go to county development that you know you're not playing at C or B level that you're playing in the top tier 
level at um at, at underage i think you have to get to that level you know you can one c championship you know one b championship but when you go into senior football you're 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 looking to be playing at the top levels you know intermediate and senior and it's a huge step up if you're playing c c championships uh, at underage so you know it's great yeah. to see declan declan and, and the team and the minors there doing really really well this year and they're playing top tier championship football and i think that's going to reap benefits down the line for the likes of you know like you've seen players like abigail asoko coming out of the minor panel like and you know ava gallers in there this year um uh, Kitty Doubts has, has really been a mark at senior level as well. So, you know, and that's coming from the development at underage and a huge amount of time put in there. So it really is a mix of uh, the clubs getting involved uh, and 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 then, you know, you really have to trial these players. I think it's very important to open the whole thing up for uh, as a trial basis and watch these players and go to the games if you're a manager and a keen manager and see players and don't be afraid to take new players in later on in the panel as well because you might have missed somebody earlier on and you, you have the chance to develop them as well. So I think it's good that way too. But yeah, it's certainly coming on at minor level, Brent. Yeah, brilliant. Mo, yeah. listen, love to talk. We're always the enemy of the show is the time here. We're down to the last minute. Yeah. Mo, you just mentioned High Flying Armagh. May 8th, 19th, massive break uh, to into that. that. We're really up against it in opening round, are we? Listen, I, I do believe so. Like, if you look at the Reams of Games there, just in the past, the Ulster finals, like, you know, marginally, run, I mean, it's about, always been a battle with Armagh, but with Armagh playing in Division 1 this this year uh, and what the panel of players that they have, they're very strong, you know, they're very good. But listen, you know, league football is very unpredictable, Brendan, we both know that. Uh, it's hard to call any game. I thought Donegal would have beaten Monaghan, but then again, they drew against them and so on and so forth. And I thought Armagh would have been better against Dublin than the last day, but it's just, it's so unpredictable. So, yeah. you know, listen, and it's a championship final and finals are always different. So, Brendan, look, we will hold the hope and that John McNulty side will go out a strong side out against Armagh and again it's an Ulster final so there's a title there to, 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 to one and, and that makes it very very different Perfect Mo Thanks Mo Listen I'll be talking to you as the season goes on Thanks for joining us this evening No problem Super Friend Chat to you soon Always good to chat to you Mo there Folks that's a wrap up then the show Thanks so much for tuning in now on Highland Radio Joe Dex is waving at me here time up and Jimmy and Paul are coming on Jimmy and Paul Paul was to chat about Thrones 21 point defeat to Dublin but uh, he'll have to explain that when he goes on himself folks with the league finals next week I'll be back we'll round up all the action for you I'll speak to you then